Police is dedicated to the services performed by the Michigan State Police, born of emergency when the Michigan troops departed for World War duty. Protecting sources of war supplies at home against terrorizing enemy sabotage made necessary a home defense force. The state trooper was given that responsibility. Today, he symbolizes the arm of authority of the state on its first line of defense. Established centralized types of services and coordinated activities of all peace officers present a unified force against the elements of crime, protecting life and property of Michigan and her people and making it a better state in which to live. Boys from the farm are part of the grist of the state police training school mill. The lad who dreams of a snappy uniform of blue and gray is jubilant when he gets word to report for training. He has been chosen from an army of applicants. From the small town come others, men of finest physique, between the ages of 22 and 30. Educational requirements are strict and many recruits come from colleges. From the campus, they go to another kind of classroom, classrooms that include the pistol range and the motorcycle sand pits. From farm, village, and city they come, eager for the experiences that blend adventure, public service, and opportunity in a new profession, modern police work. Before they march through the outer portals of the service, veteran state police officers have interviewed the home folks and former employers about them. A state police district commander has interviewed each of them and passed his report on to headquarters. Final realization of their eager hopes rests with Commissioner Oscar G. Olander and his staff. In appearance, attitude toward the service, and character, they must measure up to the highest standards. It is through this system of careful selectivity that the state police have achieved and maintained top rating. For a police organization, like every other kind of organization, is no stronger than its weakest member. To be a state trooper, one must dress like a state trooper. So the rookie isn't surprised when his first call is on the quartermaster. But what? No Sam Brown belt? <laughs> There's a twinkle in the quartermaster's eye as he pushes out a bundle and says, here's your uniform and let me know if it's too snug. It's a fatigue suit of coarse fabric. During training, there is work of the back-breaking kind, plus discipline, the habit of intelligent obedience. The recruit must accept orders without question. Waiting on table is a bit less strenuous. Wholesome food, with necessary emphasis on quantity, is provided with training table exactness. But there's a dark lining to the brightest cloud. So after dinner, there are piles of dishes that require attention. The sharp staccato notes of the pistol range are part of the training school symphony. The criminal shoots on the slightest provocation. State police face these stern realities. If a gun must ever be used, it must be used only in that split second when cool, trained judgment flashes the message of urgency to the trigger finger. So long hours are spent on the range. Men are taught the safe handling of the pistol, proper sighting, the quick draw. Farm lad and city recruit stand shoulder to shoulder and speed a bullet down the range without the jerk of the hand or the flick of an eye. The bullet must crack home in the heart of the target. This training makes champions. These three help win a police team championship at a national tournament. Gangsters war with machine guns. So when the emergency arises, the state trooper must fight fire with fire. He learns the technique of the fire-spitting Tommy gun. Here again, the rain of lead must be directed effectively. Better that the worst criminal escape than that an innocent citizen be harmed. So machine gun instruction is thorough and painstaking. A gun in the criminal's hands doesn't necessarily mean the trooper whips out a gun too. Daily instructions in jujitsu fits him to handle even the gun-waving madman without using his own gun. A quick twist, powerful shoulders come up with a snap, and the bad man is sprawled helpless. Accidents occur in spite of all precautions. Frequently, considerable time elapses after an accident before medical aid comes. Training equips troopers to know the proper thing to do at the proper time. Likewise, it trains them to prevent tragedy. 
How often well-meaning persons bundle the crushed form of an accident victim into the back seat and start at breakneck speed for a hospital. In cases of broken backs, this act of mercy invariably ends in tragedy. A definite program of motorcycle training is essential. The motorcycle officer assists in traffic regulation. He speeds up traffic movement and at the same time promotes safety when huge throngs disperse. He untangles snarls when heavy traffic jams. He answers emergency calls speedily. The mechanical part of his job, expert manipulation of his mount, must be automatic. Daily work in the sand pits makes handling of the motorcycle involuntary. Equally thorough in instruction is given the operation of automobiles. The trooper is taught that his driving will be emulated by the average motorist. Therefore, it must be the model of safety. Much of the training of the future trooper is in the lecture hall and classroom. The basic subject is police courtesy. Its importance is indicated by the fact that the commissioner appears before classes to drill into the recruits its principles. Routine in the classroom follows the usual college pattern. There are the lectures with note-taking, study periods, oral quizzes, and written examinations. Veteran officers of the organization direct work in the various subjects. Besides police courtesy, there are courses in scientific crime detection, criminal law and court procedure, traffic control, personal identification, criminal identification and investigation, police organization and administration. Subjects and police sciences involved in these studies include fingerprinting, photography, firearms, radiology, explosives, fires, abnormal psychology, chemistry, physics, public relations, safety and traffic control, uniform crime reporting, conservation and legal medicine. This outline of training school routine forms the background of every man wearing the uniform of the Michigan State Police today. There have been no shortcuts. Every commissioned officer in the organization went the first hard mile. Commissioner Olander, who has directed the organization for more than 12 years, himself started as a trooper when the Michigan State Police, as an organization, was going its first hard mile more than 20 years ago. But the story of training does not end with the rightfully proud recruit on the front steps of the training school in his snappy uniform looking for worlds to conquer or crooks to run down. The record of state police training is perpetual. Each year, he returns to the East Lansing headquarters for a brief course in a reconditioning school. Thus, is he kept abreast of new advances in the police sciences and is informed on new laws and their interpretation. Training ranges from ballistics to swimming and rescue of a person floundering in deep water. In addition to actual classwork, educational bulletins are issued semi-monthly. Examinations are conducted on their contents to assure maintenance of qualifications up to the standard of modern police methods. Today, crime is exacting the greatest toll in history. Gangland is as modern as tomorrow. To beat crime requires the finest men and the best training in America. Your state police is training its men to meet this responsibility. The finest police homes in America house the personnel of the Michigan State Police. From this headquarters at East Lansing, activities of posts in both peninsulas of the state are directed. Each is of brick and stone construction and is thoroughly modern. One of the finest district headquarters is this structure, from which are directed state police activities in the Detroit area. These fine buildings were not erected merely for the comfort of the personnel, but to represent the solidity and permanence of the organization they house. This is a larger substation, the post in the heart of Michigan's oil fields at Mount Pleasant. State police posts throughout the state, patrols such as this one, face an inspecting officer before starting on tours of duty that extend over Michigan's 57,000 square miles. The patrols are organized primarily to combat crime outside the corporate limits of cities. Cars and motorcycles alike are radio equipped, and a call of distress or emergency is flashed to them for attention instantaneously. Protection of motorists on the 68,000 miles of improved Michigan highways has become more and more a definite major responsibility as traffic has increased. 300 men in cars and on motorcycles join daily in an effort to make your journey a safe one. Day and night, they war on the reckless driver and aid the safe driver. 
tragedy does not ride the same mile when the trooper is on patrol. The night patrol was a significant forward step in both rural crime control and in night driving safety. There was a time when farmers locked their hen houses with apprehension each night. Will the fowls be there in the morning? While chicken stealing appears to be a petty crime, it isn't petty to the farmer, nor is it petty when huge rings are organized for systematic looting, looting that sometimes took in a single night thousands of chickens from dozens of farms. Chicken stealing is important to the state police because it's mighty important to the farmers who lose them. So, when there is a theft of this type, the trooper investigates the case carefully and has a pretty high average in running down the ones responsible. Roving bands of night marauders struck out at the farmer and the residents of towns and villages. Motorized cattle rustlers became active. Today, the night patrol cruises the main highways and the back roads. Suspicious loads are inspected and questionable night prowlers are checked. When the farmer goes forth at the crack of dawn for the morning chores, he has some assurance his stock will still be there. The night patrol looks over rural gas stations and small stores and watches grain elevators. It is alert for the drunken driver who had turned the highway into an avenue of death and destruction and is alert for that spot of red in the night sky that tells of a farm fire. A night watchman in a small village was no match for a gang of hoodlums who raided a sleeping community. Suspicious strangers are required to give a satisfactory account of themselves. Michigan's popularity as a resort state may be attributed to the fact that the summer visitor from another state finds state troopers contributing to his pleasure and safety. Touring information is available for every trooper. He might even have a suggestion where the larger trout are hitting. Troopers also maintain a watch over the thousands of camps and resort properties, checking against possible break-ins or storm damage that should be reported to the owner at once. Reports on these inspections, if everything is found in order, is left by the troopers. When the tourist opens his place again, these inspection cards are evidence of a friendly service that is appreciated keenly and reflected in his friends, perhaps, selecting Michigan for their summer outings. While it is Michigan lakes and forests that have spurred the tourist business into an industry netting millions, a contribution to the security and protection of resort investments has become an important factor. Another service involves the safety of families using oil for lamps and stoves. All kerosene is rigidly inspected. Troopers test each car with a flash test. The reading on the thermometer when the flame flickers out indicates whether or not the fuel is a safe product. Troopers assist the state highway department in the maintenance of thousands of miles of paved highway by checking traffic to see that two great loads for highway protection are not carried by the thousands of trucks operating over these highways daily. One of the greatest investments of the state is in its highways. Abuse of this common property, intentionally or inadvertently, must be prevented. So, a safe load is required in the check of all vehicles. Weighing stations are maintained at regular points for such checks. They also have portable equipment, which may appear at the least suspected spot for a surprise checkup. Police courtesy embraces doing the friendly turn for the person in distress. After some help on a tire change, this driver may not feel so bitter if later the trooper gives her a ticket. The troopers take wings. An emergency might require high-speed moving of officers. The state police plane is available. Like the cars they ride, the plane is radio equipped, and as earphones are adjusted, the voice of the dispatcher comes to them from the towers of WRDS. Perhaps they are searching for a killer fleeing in an automobile. The plane sweeps over a vast area, cut into tiny squares by its road system. While cars of a blockade close in, the troopers on wings sight the fleeing car. The transmitter in the plane is snapped on, and a word of the discovery is flashed to the dispatcher. In a period measured in seconds, he barks new instructions to radio cars in the area.